Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to rate dried dog kibble. I took a few um, popular common brands that you see a lot, and I'm going to be comparing all of those and talking about them, seeing how good or bad they are. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel because I do make a lot of animal videos. In fact, I have a lot of dog videos, all of which you can find in my dog playlist. <laughs> Before we get started, I do want to give a quick shout out to Affordable Testing. Now, if you're watching this video, you probably want to find out what is best for your dog and what you should be feeding them. But it doesn't matter what you feed them or how much money you spend on their food if they are allergic to the food that you are giving them. Unfortunately, dogs cannot tell us which foods make their tummy hurt. But Affordable Testing offers a very easy solution. You can get your dog's hair tested to find out what types of foods they are intolerant to. It is so amazing and it works. Uh, down below in the description will be a link to a video further explaining how all of this works. I tried this out with my dogs for several months before even talking about it online. So be sure to check that out. And this test is available for humans, dogs, cats, and horses. A link for it will be down below in the description so that you can get 10% off. Okay, let's talk about dog food. First off, I do wanna say that raw food is the best thing that you can give your dog, even cooked meals. Fresh food is the best thing to offer almost any animal. And so you aren't going to get anything as good using dry dog kibble. Dehydrated dog food is also really great. So kibble is not great. However, there are some that are worse than others. And that's mainly what we're gonna be looking at today. For whatever reason, people decide to feed their dogs kibble. And so today that's what we're gonna focus on in this video. And we're gonna be looking at 10 different brands and comparing those brands, such as looking at the protein level, the ingredients, and and the cost of the dog food. Now I am using the Chewy app to look at all of the different brands as far as the price goes and the ingredients. So I will let you know what the price of the dog food is on the Chewy app versus what it is in a uh, regular store price. I'm pulling up a few popular brands to look at today and I'm going to be giving them a one through five star rating with five being the best and with one being not so great. So first off to start, we will be looking at Blue Buffalo and we are be looking at Blue Buffalo Wilderness Chicken Recipe Grain-Free Dry Dog Food. And this is a 24 pound bag. It costs about $56 regular and on Chewy it's $53. So let's say that um, the average between that would actually be $2.28 a pound. This is the most expensive brand we are going to be looking at today. So let's see how, how it does for, for being so expensive. Now, the first thing that's concerning to me just by looking at this brand is the fact that they are advertising as being grain-free dog food. Now, I've said before that not every dog is allergic to grains, and it's very rare that a dog will be allergic to all types of grains. So the best thing to do, like I said, is to actually get your dog tested. It's not gonna help your dog if you take all the grains out of their diet and they're allergic to something like chicken. <laughs> so that's why you need to get your dog tested. and. I recommend doing that over, um, you know, working with, with vets. Um, I've spent lots of money at vets offices for my dog's allergies and got no results. And it's because when you're doing that, it's just a guess. And so, yeah, it's, I don't really like seeing grain-free dog foods right away because then, uh, first of all, most dogs don't need that. And second of all, there's usually something hiding in there. So we're gonna look at that. And another thing I also did wanna mention is that research has found that the stomach contents of wolves actually do contain plant matter. So while it was uh, believed that they only ate meat, that's not um, entirely true. They do also eat um, other plant material. And also the gut and gizzards of the animals that they are eating is also going to contain plant matter that they do ingest. So let's look at the ingredients of Blue Buffalo and see what they are. Okay, so it has deboned chicken, chicken meal, peas, pea protein, tapioca starch, manhattan fish meal, source of omega-3 fatty acids, dried tomato, chicken fat, flax seeds, pea starch, natural flavors, dried egg protein, dehydrated alfalfa meal, potatoes, curry root, <laughs> I don't know how to say that, I'm sorry, uh, pea fiber, alfalfa nutrient concentrate, sweet potatoes, carrots, 
yeah, and that's about it. Okay, and so there we go. There it is. Uh, their filler is not grain. It's actually alfalfa. And there's a lot of alfalfa in this food because we, as we can see from the list of ingredients, it's actually split up into two different groups. And so the reason they do that, they'll split something into two different groups so that it comes out later in the list of ingredients instead of close to the top or right at the top. Now alfalfa is a food that is high in protein and has become the new cheap filler for dog food. Essentially it's the new corn. And alfalfa is something that's used mainly for farm animals. However, it is actually a better option to feed most animals grass than alfalfa, uh, farm animals and stuff like that because horses and rabbits have a harder time digesting alfalfa. So based on what we know from animals and what we know from nutrition, it does doesn't make any sense to be putting alfalfa in a dog's food. Of course, like most things like this, the research behind it is lacking. But we do know that dogs need to get their protein source from animal products and not from grains and things like that. So why would you want alfalfa in your dog's food? But there's a few things that can save them. Uh, Deboned chicken, that's really good. And that should be mostly meat. Chicken meal isn't as bad as chicken byproduct. And then they do use fish meal and has a source of omega-3, so that's good. Uh, peas are broken down into several groups, but that's gonna be pretty much with every dog food brand. It has eggs, uh, chicken fat for flavor, and the rest of the ingredients really aren't too bad. And the protein is 34%, so I think we can say a lot of animal protein is used for that. However, 34% is actually overkill, and you don't really want to be feeding your dogs that much protein. Large breed puppies that are really active, uh, 30 to 34 percent is okay, but this isn't really ideal for just a typical adult dog. So for the most part, the ingredients are good, 34 percent protein, but for $2.28 a pound, this food is extremely overpriced especially considering that they do have alfalfa as a filler. So I think overall, blue buffalo isn't terrible, but there's just certain things about it that make it not very good or very suitable for anybody. So I think for blue buffalo, we're gonna end up giving them three stars out of five. And we're gonna be comparing other brands of high quality food so that it'll be a little bit easier to understand why this got kind of a low rating. All right, next we're gonna be looking at pedigree, and this is pedigree adult complete nutrition, roasted chicken, rice, and vegetable flavor dry dog food. That is 33 pounds for 1810, and that makes it about 55 cents a pound, so let's not get our hopes up. So the ingredients include ground whole grain corn, meat and bone meal, corn gluten meal, animal fat source for omega-6 fatty acids, and really quick, both omega-6 and 3 are good, but you want to eat omega-3s. Usually for Americans, our diets are way too high in omega-6. That's something very easy to get. So not impressive to put on your list of ingredients. Uh, soy meal, natural flavor, chicken byproduct meal, dried plain beet pulp, ground whole grain wheat, all right, so this is bad. This is mainly corn. Corn is a very cheap filler for dog food. It's just super easy to make lots of, of product with. And so we're not going to get into the debate here of corn being bad and why it's bad for dogs, but you can very easily Google anything like this. I'll try to also include some links in the description. Corn is not something that is good for dogs to be eating, and this food is mainly corn. Uh, first ingredient, really, and usually they'll try to to hide it a little bit. Corn basically just doesn't have any nutritional value for the dogs. And what's really horrifying is that there's still a lot of vets that will tell you that this type of dog food is perfectly fine, but that's a whole nother can of worms for another day. So basically there's not really any animal protein in this food. Um, by looking at the list of ingredients, we can tell that there's almost none. Uh, basically what they're doing here is just using enough animal product to flavor it, uh, to have the flavor of chicken. Uh, so roasted chicken is only a flavor. Uh, there isn't any, any actual roasted chicken in the food. Rice, well, uh, it's on there near the bottom. And vegetables, there just isn't any vegetables in this ingredients unless you want to count um, beetroot. Jeez. So while they advertise uh, vegetables and chicken and stuff, there, there's hardly any of that. Uh, there's definitely no vegetables. 
Uh, basically, more accurately, this food should be called complete corn flavored with the garbage of the slaughterhouse. <laughs> and it's 21% protein. Not that that really matters at this point. So you probably know by now, uh, this food is definitely going to get a one star rating. <sighs> and really that's only because one star is the lowest we're going with here. Um, basically they just got a participation trophy. Moving on, next we are going to be talking about Royal Canine. Now for full disclosure, I very, very much dislike Royal Canine for a couple of reasons. Uh, for example, their ridiculous marketing tactics of having a bag of dog food for each breed like that even matters. Um, it's, it's all the same garbage being fed to boxers, shih tzus, yorkies. It's the same stuff, but they advertise it that way. Even worse is that this company makes dog food for certain types of health conditions for dogs that are prone to, to getting these certain types of problems. So for example, they'll make food that is to prevent kidney stones. However, the food that they have, the ingredients going into this food is actually what is causing kidney stones in dogs. And the real mind blower here is that veterinarians are selling these types of food in their clinics. Now I'm going to link information down below about all of this so that you get some more information about it because oh, we could go into a whole video just about this, but your holistic veterinarians that are doing new research and you know, incorporating like raw diets um, and stuff like that, they're saying that high carbohydrate diets like this is what is actually causing all the health problems in dogs. So I'll link that information down below, but that's a little bit of disclosure as to why I don't like Royal Canine, but let's look at it fairly and go over everything about it. All right, so for this video, we're gonna be looking at Royal Canine Size Health Nutrition Medium Adult Dry Dog Food. This is a 30 pound bag and it is $60 regular price and $50 on Chewy. So let's say it's $55, so $1.84 a pound. Keep that in mind though, that if you did buy this food at regular price, it would be $2 a pound. Well, let's look at the ingredients. We have brewer's rice, chicken byproduct meal, oat groats, wheat, corn gluten meal, chicken fat, natural flavor, dry clean beet pulp, fish oil. Uh, all right, that's it. There's really not a lot of stuff in here. <sighs> okay, where to start? So let's start with the animal protein. Um, byproduct meal is not good. So just like chicken meal, not so bad. Byproduct chicken meal, not good at all. That's even worse. Byproduct meal is basically everything left over in the slaughterhouse and then it is processed a lot before even being put into dog food to be processed more. Uh, chicken fat is just used to flavor the food so that it tastes like chicken. So overall, very little animal protein. There's a lot of grains. Uh, so corn, rice, oats, wheat, corn, gluten meal. This is corn that was not fit for human consumption. And it comes to 23% protein. So pedigree was 55 cents a pound, and this is $1.84 a pound. So it's three times your money, a little bit more than that, but I'm not really seeing a difference here. In fact, pedigree had more animal protein because it did have meat and bone meal, whereas Royal Canine, um, it doesn't have soy like pedigree, but wow, like there's, there's really not much of a difference here. So as you can imagine, we are going to give Royal Canine a one star review. And that is because for the price that you are paying for this, you are not getting your money's worth. It is ridiculously overpriced. Now, next we will be looking at Taste of the Wild. So this next one should be a little bit better. Um, this is Taste of the Wild Pine Forest Grain-Free Dry Dog Food, and it is 28 uh, pound bag for $49, making it $1.75 a pound. So let's see how this grain-free dog food compares. A venison, lamb meal, garbanzo beans, peas, lentils, pea protein, pea flour, egg product, canola oil, fava beans, tomato, uh, natural flavors, ocean fish meal, salmon oil, uh, tomatoes, blueberries, ram raspberries, yucca. Okay, so actually overall really not too bad. There are several animal proteins, so venison, lamb meal, egg product, fish meal, and it also has things like raspberries and yucca. 
There is no grain, so instead they use things like beans, peas, and lentils. No alfalfa, so that's really good. And it's 28% protein, which is the perfect amount. Now, compared to blue buffalo that claim to be uh, grain-free for $2.28 a pound, this food is better overall and a better price. Another really important thing to note here is that it is actually less than royal canine, which did turn out to be complete garbage. So I'm actually gonna give this food five stars overall for the quality and the price. All right, next we're gonna be looking at Purina. So Purina does make, uh, most of these brands make a lot of different types of dog food. Uh, so Purina that we will be looking at is Purina One Smart Blend Chicken and Rice Adult. It is a 31 pound bag for $33.81, making it about $1.09 per pound. So let's see what it has. Chicken, rice flour, corn gluten meal, whole grain corn, chicken byproduct meal, whole grain wheat, soy meal, beef fat, liver flavor, dried carrots, dried peas, and that's basically it. Now the protein is already better than the one star brands that we've recently looked at. Uh, chicken and chicken byproduct. Uh, still has a lot of corn, wheat, and soy. Uh, but at least it does have carrots too and a protein of 26%. So it's not too good, but it's also not too terrible. So I think overall we're going to grant them two stars just because also for about 60 cents more, you do get a lot better food. Next food on the list is Neutro. Now this is a brand that I personally use. Neutro is what I fed my Corgi puppies uh, when they were transitioning from you know drinking milk to eating solid food before they went to their new homes. And so not all of these dogs were gonna be fed a raw diet. So I thought that Neutro was actually a pretty good food to start them out with. And you'll be able to see here a list of ingredients and everything. It's a really good food. So for this video, we're gonna be looking at Neutro Wholesome Essential Large Breed Adult Farm Raised Chicken Brown Rice and Sweet Potato Recipe Dry Dog Food. <laughs> these names are long. And this is a 30 pound bag. It is $53 regular and $50 on Chewy. So let's say it's uh, $51.50, which would make it $1.72 a pound. Now what's really important that sets Nutrio apart from other brands is that it is made with GMO free ingredients. So let's look at those ingredients. Chicken, chicken meal, whole brown rice, brewer's rice, split peas, whole grain, sorghum, uh, chicken fat, rice brams, dried sweet potatoes, uh, lamb meal, dried plain beef pulp, flax seeds. So the animal protein is good. You have chicken, chicken meal, and lamb meal. Already a big deal with the food is when they have a protein source that is not a meal. It also has rice and sweet potatoes, as well as fruits and vegetables, beet pulp, peas, apples, blueberries, and carrots. So overall, the ingredients are pretty good. It does have a 21% protein, which is okay. A little bit low comparing to other brands, but I think that the non-GMO ingredients really does save it here. And like I said, you don't need a super high protein for an adult dog. Now, for all of this, I would actually give them 4.5 stars considering uh, the little bit of a lower protein, but considering the price and that it was actually a little bit cheaper than Taste of the Wild while being made with non-GMO ingredients, I think that's something really important to look at. So something like that being organic, non-GMO, might not matter to a lot of people, but I think it's something that we still need to consider. So for this brand, I am actually going to give them five stars. Next, we're gonna be looking at Science Diet, and this is another one of my favorite brands, and by that, I mean favorite brands to hate on. <laughs> and just the brand name alone makes people think that they're buying the best thing for their dog. That's super frustrating to me. It's just out of that, I would give them one star, but <laughs> let's be fair, judge it fairly and go over everything like all the other brands, even though I can't stand Science Diet. So we're gonna be looking at Hill Science Diet Adult Large Breed Dry Dog Food. It is a 35 pound bag for $56 regular, regular price or $48 on Chewy. So let's say that it's $52, uh, which would make it $1.48 a pound. And just so that you can compare the price since there's a little bit of a difference, if you bought it like at somewhere at PetSmart, it would be $1.60 a pound. So this price is actually up there close to Neutro and Taste of the Wild and Royal Canine. However, we did see that those three brands turned out to be very different when comparing them. So let's see what we have here. All right, so this has chicken, whole grain wheat, cracked pearl barley, whole grain sorghum, whole grain corn, 
corn gluten meal, chicken meal, pork fat, chicken liver flavor, dried beet pulp. And then at the very bottom of the list, after all of the stuff used to process the food, there is apples, broccoli, carrots, cranberries, and green peas. So this is a step up from Royal Canine because it does actually have chicken, but it does have a long list of grains, which include uh, corn at the top, uh, wheat, barley. It has chicken meal, which is better than a uh, byproduct meal. And while it does have fruits and vegetables, they are so far down on the list of ingredients that it's like, really, how much could there actually be in this food? So I don't know if that really counts. Uh, protein is 21%, which is efficient, but like we said, a little bit lower, and the ingredients do not help at all. So based off the price, this food is just a little too expensive for all of the grains that it has. However, it does have a decent amount of animal proteins, better than some of the other ones that we were seeing with a lot of grains. So for a science diet, I am going to give them two stars. Next, we're going to be looking at Rachel Ray. Uh, this is a brand that I've personally used in the past. I actually uh, really like Rachel Ray's food. However, it does need to be said that Rachel Ray food varies greatly. There are some bags that are really great. There's some that are just awful. Um, so the quality can be really bad. Uh, personally, my favorite is just six. That's the one that I've used in the past. Uh, but yeah, there, there's a lot of difference in the food. For the sake of this video, we're going to be looking at Rachel Ray Nutrish Peak grain free natural open range recipe with beef venison and lamb dry dog food so this is a 23 pound bag for $47.49 regular price and $44.93 on chewy so let's say roughly that it's $46.50 which would make it $2.02 .02 a pound so this food is expensive. The ingredients are beef, chicken meal, dried peas, whole dried potatoes, pea flour, pea protein, chicken fat, lamb meal, whole flax seeds, pork gelatin, venison, lamb, menhaden fish meal, dried plain beet pulp, natural flavors, sweet potatoes, cranberries. Now what's good is that it does have really good animal proteins such as beef, lamb, venison, uh, which are not meal. So that's really good as well as chicken meal, lamb meal, and fish meal with chicken fat and pork gelatin for flavor. So a lot of animal product in that. And the fillers are actually pretty decent. So for the food being labeled grain free, there is no alfalfa and it's peas, potatoes, beet pulp, sweet potatoes, and cranberry. And the protein is 30%. So while the food is expensive, you are actually getting a pretty good quality. Of all the brands we looked at, this actually does have the best protein sources. So out of that, I would actually give them five stars. However, we need to consider that 30% protein, which is a little too high for most adult dogs. And so that's, uh, this would be really, really good food for like a large breed puppy. Uh, protein is perfect but for an adult dog it's a little high so i think because of that i'm gonna give them 4.5 stars for this dog food now let's look at another very popular brand that's been around forever i'ms dog food this is i'ms proactive health adult mini chunks dry dog food and it is a 30 pound bag uh, regular price is 35 dollars and it is um 31.94 on chewy so let's say it's um 33.50 which would make it about a dollar 12 per pound okay so it has chicken ground whole grain corn ground whole grain uh, sorghum chicken byproduct meal dried beef pulp natural flavors chicken fat dried egg product not great but it's also not the worst it does have the chicken and chicken uh, byproduct meal egg product for the protein uh, there is beet pulp peas and spinach and I mean hey there's been some brands that have been advertising vegetables on the label of their food and they don't have any so <laughs> that's already kind of a step up but it does have corn at least not corn by product meal but it does still have corn uh, with 25% protein I actually feel like for the price you are getting what you are paying for it's cheap food so it's not that great but you're also not getting like complete garbage it's cheaper than Royal Canine and Science Diet while having a better protein than Royal Canine and it does have less grain than Science Diet while having more protein percentage than both. Uh, so based off of all that, I'm actually going to give it three stars. And this came out the same as Blue Buffalo, but remember how overpriced Blue Buffalo was. So for this food, it's it's not that bad for, for what you're paying for, I guess. 
And the last food that we're going to be looking at today is Crave. Uh, so for this video, we're going to be looking at Crave with protein from lamb and venison adult grain-free dry dog food. It is 22 uh, pound bag for $45 regular and $42.66 on Chewy. So let's say $43.80 on average. That makes it about $1.99 a pound. So it's almost the same price as Rachel Ray's food that we just looked at peak. So let's see how it compares. All right, so this has deboned lamb, chicken meals, chickpeas, split peas, lamb meal, potato protein, chicken fat, dried potatoes, dehydrated alfalfa meal, venison meal, and flax seeds. So already we can see that it does not have the amount of animal product that Peak did. Uh, deboned lamb meal is good. Uh, but then we go to chicken meal, lamb meal, and venison meal. And then look at that. Um, they are advertising as grain free, but they do have alfalfa meal. Not as much alfalfa as Blue Buffalo did though, but the ingredients just do not compare to Peak, especially considering the price. Then it does have 34% protein. That's overkill. Dogs get health problems and uh, joint issues and things like that from having a diet that's too high in protein. So that's why I've been mentioning, it, mentioning that throughout this video. That's why you want to stay away from foods like this that are just overkill for an average adult dog. Now this is a hard one to rate because the ingredients are good but not for the price and the protein is too much. Uh, then there's the secret filler, alfalfa, which is the new corn. I think overall I'm going to give it the same rating as Blue Buffalo because it's overpriced but it does have good animal uh, protein products. So three stars for Crave. Now I know this was kind of a long video packed with a lot of information so let's really quickly go over the 10 different brands that we looked at and what we gave them. So Blue Buffalo was $2.28 per pound with a 3 star rating. Pedigree was $0.55 cents per pound with a 1 star rating. Royal Canine was $1.84 per pound with a 1 star rating. Taste of the Wild was $1.75 per pound with a 5 star rating. Purina was $1.09 per pound with a 2 star rating. Neutro was $1.72 per pound with a 5 star rating. Science Diet was $1.48 per pound with a 2 star rating. Rachel Ray was $2.02 per pound with a 4.5 star rating. Imes was $1.12 per pound with a 3 star rating. And Crave at $1.99 per pound was a 3 star rating. I hope this puts some perspective on dry dog kibble for you since I see a lot of people equating the price to the quality of food you're getting, which as we can see from looking at this brand is not the case. It's, it's kind of all over the place actually when it comes to price versus quality. And I hope this taught you something about the ingredients found in dog food and I can just imagine everybody running off to go look at their bag of dog food right now. So please write down below in the comments which ingredients you are surprised to find in your dog's kibble and whether or not you're going to be switching. Are you satisfied with what you are feeding them and what you're paying for? Also please let me know in the comments if after watching this video you felt more confident about what you're feeding your dog or if you immediately wanted to run out and throw everything away. Also, if you do decide to switch to a better dog food, I just want to remind everybody that switching to a healthier type of food can actually make your dog sick, and this is a totally normal process. I've seen a lot of people, though, immediately go back to feeding them that really cheap, bad food just because they got diarrhea when switched over to a healthier option. So I can make a whole video about that if you're interested in it because that's, it's not a reason to stop feeding good food and go back to bad food. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Shout out to you guys who are still watching at this point. You guys are my real intellectuals. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and I'll see you guys next time.